Papers, I obviously need to make it. We're here to talk about entrepreneurship. When I looked at the newspapers, I said, you know, the, the most highest paying jobs were for the salespeople. So I said, that's where I'm going. <laughs> that's where I'm going. So I made a decision really fast. And, uh, and in that, um, I, was, I was embarrassed at the beginning, but I realized that, that that stumbling block at that time ended up to be this formula that I think will really have a serious impact on, uh, on, on a lot of lives and really level the playing field. So, the book, if I'm going to try to go through these slides really fast, but we're going to get to what we're going to do today. My goal is to teach or to show everybody that what, what I've learned in corporate America, America, which is how to make a money machine. So we want to, we want to go from this, this, this uh, thought of a formula to a, a behavioral model or business model to an actual piece of equipment, a money machine. The book is a cross between this book, I don't know if you're familiar with it, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Think and Grow Rich, which is the godfather of all self-help books by Napoleon Hill. And uh, it, you know, I'm, I'm here to say that I believe this is the latest and greatest of business technology. Uh, technology moves society forward. In some instances, there's some great folks like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King who, who move society forward, but usually technology is what gets us to put one foot in front of the other. Um, the Industrial Revolution freed the slaves, not Abraham Lincoln. All right. So the most reliable machine on earth is a formula. That's the that's the mystique of a formula. That formulas from to the day the earth ends, one plus one will always be two. And that's the that's the value of a formula. That's what this that's what's in this book for you. If I do indeed have a formula for making money, then it'll never break. And you can rely on this more than you can rely on me or even yourself. And most people, that that pat that previous form, most people said, I can't feed my children with this formula. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't protect myself from the cold with this formula. This means nothing to them. And this gentleman came along, and uh, at, the, at the end of World War II, and he took that same formula, and he did this, and he created the atomic bomb. And when I was in college, I, I, I was studying engineering. I hated engineering classes. I was like, what am I going to learn about something about money? Nobody was talking about money. I was here to get cops to make money. And uh, so I snuck out of my engineering class and. Hid in the back of a friend's, friend's class who was um, studying economics, told me to learn something about money. And I was stunned that they took the same formulas that I use in my engineering classes to calculate current and electricity in a circuit to calculate how long it was going to take for a company or a country to, you know, to go through inflation or deflation. That's when I realized that, wow, formulas are powerful. And had I not done that, I would have probably ignored the value of formulas for my entire life. So that was a really big. Uh, that was, a real, that was a really big revelation for me. Now, the whole, we said before, the whole morphing of formula to a behavioral model, the OSI model is what Steve Jobs and Bill Gates used to make themselves billionaires. Although, although you may think they're geniuses, they use this OSI model. And I used to sell computer systems. I was a sales engineer. I would use this to design computer systems for schools, for uh, Pepsi or Condé Nast. I was, that, I was the nerd that went into these companies and I would say, I'm going to design your computer system, and you know what? They would say, you know, I like Intel. He doesn't smell, and he, he clipped his nail before he came to the office. So you know what? We're going to give him the we're going to give him the business. Um, this is another behavioral model that a lot of marketing people use. Abraham Maslow's theory of needs. Henry Ford created a formula to create a Model T, the Formula One. And I, this slide is just to show that formulas and models with engineers and salespeople are something that they they talk about in the back end. They laugh about it. And that's why they name these things formulas and models. So, um, to some one of the other presenters' points, what is success? Success is a point in time where preparation and opportunity collide. So you study real hard, and you run into that person who wants a job, and boom, you have success. Success is something that turns out as planned. We're here today to talk about success in terms of wealth, fame, and power, to create wealth in our communities, money. Fashion models teach us how to dress for success. These people just behave themselves into success. I remember when I was young and I'd get in trouble. <laughs> my mother would be like, I'd be like, why, why are you screaming at me? Because you don't know how to act, boy. Right? This gentleman knows how to act. He acted his way right into the most powerful post in the, in the United States of America, or the world. I was a musician as a, Mr. Marshall, and this is a model for creating a song. Most people don't know it. This is a formula for making music, the AAB format. So Melody goes A, and you hear it, it's very similar, and it almost repeats itself, and the B is the bridge, and usually at the bottom that's an A. So that's a formula 
from making music. Most people think these musicians are just geniuses. No, they're using this formula. Leading sociologists will tell you that people have the best chance of achieving their goals for success and behave best when they're imitating models of behavior that works. And in that instance, success and failure become a choice. And I believe that our people in our communities are making, fit, are making conscious choices to fail because they do not have behavioral models that other people in other neighborhoods do. And I think that's about to change with this. So I'm, I'm proud to present this as the formula. Success is equal to I plus C plus R is equal to success. Yay. <laughs> All right, so we go to this whole notion of a money machine. And if I'm going to be an engineer, and I'm going to, engineers create things, if you would, we turn this thing into a machine, if you were to open up the hood of this machine, this is what you would see. And this little wheel at the bottom here is the way the machine behaves, the predictable behavior of manufacturing capital, whether you're, an, uh, whether you're a gas station attendant or whether you're a literature person or, or you're an engineer or you're a writer. The manufacturing of money is going to stick to this behavior. All right? So we live in a money machine, and you're all a piece of equipment inside this United States as a money machine. And if you were to buy this machine, like you were to buy a Porsche or, or you know, a Range Rover or a pair of Nikes, okay, this machine has a price tag of $14 trillion. That's how much this machine costs. All right? The problem is we need to make our own machines inside this machine and take advantage of it. So this is the organic behavior. And I really like this slide because what I'm trying to say is that it starts with the idea. So we're going to teach everybody. Through this presentation, you're going to see where these ideas come from. It starts with the idea, which then creates the product, which then attracts these relationships, which give you money. But they also, the greatest thing about this is that they give you your next idea for your next product.